Hello everyone. Welcome to this series on Absolver. Absolver is a third person action fighting game. I think it's the best description you could possibly use for it. It's been out for a little while, but um, as far as games go, it's very interesting. And I've got some pretty strong feelings and opinions about it that I'd like to get to at the end of our little sejourn here in, uh, in this world. Now, before we get going, uh, I just want to mention that I've played this for about 70 hours and I still feel like I'm bad at the game. So, just keep that in mind for the end game stuff that we'll talk about in episode, I think, 3-ish. We're going to make a new character. Uh, you can, when you're making a new character, you can choose uh, their skin color by choosing which region they come from, which isn't at all strange, but also totally okay, I guess. They didn't have a lot of uh, immigration, I suppose, in this world. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start a Orin character, because that way it looks a little tan. We're going to make him a dude. You can also make him, uh, well, make her a girl if you wanted to, but you either have a boy or a girl, and that's about it as far as this game's concerned. We're going to go for a braided haircut, because I think it looks rad as heck, and we're going to go for light blondes to contrast with our skin color. Every character you make starts off in one of three different combat styles, and at you know any point throughout the game, you can learn new ones. And you can learn up to four new styles. Every style has its own strengths. Uh, there aren't really a ton of like supreme weaknesses, so long as you know how to use the styles. But some are definitely harder to use than others. Every style also affects your stats. So let's start off with the one we're ne the ones we're definitely not picking. Forsaken here, also known as Parryman's, boosts your strength a bit and also gives you the ability to parry. Parry is really good. Like, really good. You pick a direction and if the attack comes from that direction or direction similar to it, then you stun them. Straight up. You don't deal, you don't deal the opponent damage, but you do straight up stun people with it. It makes it very good. Next, we have Whooshman, also known as Windfall. It boosts main, mainly your dexterity. You can dodge things by jumping over them, ducking underneath them, moving from side to side. It's really, really cool, but uh, it is also the hardest one to pull off since there's four different directions you can do your uh, whooshing in. Finally, and the one that we're picking because I'm a scrub, is Sponge Man. Sponge Man is mainly a lot stronger and a lot more, uh, he's got a lot more HP, which means that you can make mistakes with him, which is nice. He also has the ability to sponge attacks. So when you sponge an attack, you take the damage, but it's temporary. If you manage to get off another hit in time, or if you just don't get hit over the next couple of seconds, you get that life back. It means that you can absorb almost every attack possible in a row, and then just get all your life back, which is pretty sweet. The downside is if you get hit again before you get all your HP back, you lose the HP, and then on top of that, you can't absorb every single attack, whereas every other style in the game has ways of dealing with the uh, with every attack in the game. Sponge Man can't. So you have to use your other defensive options, which we'll get to later. Like, don't worry about that. That's fine. Finally, we're going to name our character something different. I asked Twitter for some names, and uh, I determined that after a little bit, I decided that the only applicable name here would be Jack. Absolver Jack seems like a pretty good way to do things. Back to the past. Absolver Jack. <laughs> By the way, Samurai Jack, I absolutely love that show. We'll see if we can uh, do that show justice. Hmm. Let's play a game. Duck. 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 Goose! That, that's pretty much the selection process here at the, uh, at whatever this place is. They play Duck, Duck, Goose, and whoever gets is the goose gets to meet the magical, mystical man here. Who is seemingly sentient. So you might be asking, what did you do to the mask? Well, first off, let's enter the Matrix together, you and I. And the Matrix is pretty. So 
So, what just happened? It's a great question. Effectively, when you first start the game, you don't know anything what just happened. You don't know who the hooded guys are, you don't know who the magical mystical man is, you don't know what this mask does, you don't know why you're putting it on, you don't know why you got clothes, and for the most part, those questions will go unanswered. You eventually earn equipment that it tells you some things in the description, kind of the, the Dark Souls, you know, style of storytelling in that respect, and there is some environmental storytelling. Like, the part that we just witnessed was pretty sweet. You go from a cold, hard mountaintop, and you come into this, like, little zen garden. It's 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 a its own visual metaphor for uh, for like meditation and for focus. It's it's a cool little thing, honestly. This is a shame you can never come back here. Once we get through here, anyway. And look, we're at the plains of a doll. It's a beautiful place. If you're wondering, hey, that looks like there's it's pretty barren. It's because you don't have to explore all of it. In fact, you don't. You, not only do you not have to, they won't let you. The the game. The, We'll get to the size of the game later. Um, instead, let's just focus on what the game's trying to teach us. So, the tutorial for this game is largely unhelpful. You, It tells you which button to push, and then stuff happens. And it tells you to do stuff. And you're like, why am I doing this? Well, it, honestly, it's not much better than uh, like the most basic of tutorials. And that's that's a, that's a to its detriment, really. Uh, let's let's assume that we forgot how to lock on or something. Does, that, does this work? Yeah, you can just punch him. That's fine. Look at those punches, pizza cake. So to attack normally, you just push the one button. That's fine. If you're wondering, hey, wait a minute, only one button to attack, that sounds dumb. Don't worry, there's other attacks. You see that little square in the center there? That determines your position relative to your target. So if I'm in this stance, my body's facing that way. If I'm in this stance, my body's facing you know, up and the forward and to the right. If it's facing this way, it's facing back into the right. If it's facing this way, it's facing back into the left. Every one of these has its own moves. So if we started here, I think it is. No, it's uh, here. We only have, we have our two punch combo that we just saw. Over and over and over again. If we start here, we actually have an uppercut first before it leads back into this stance with our two punch combo. If we start in this stance, we get a fast punch that leads back into the other punches. If we start in this stance, we get a knee attack before it gets into all the other punches. Now, if you're wondering, hey, that seems really basic and stupid, D don't worry. First off, the attack system is going to get really bonkers later on. Second, there's such thing as alternative attacks, which has been showing you for a little bit. Every single one of these stances has its own alternative attack and must have its own alternative attack. The alternative attacks must change your stance as well. The cool news is, this means that you can do a punch, alternative attack, different punch, alternative attack, and just really mix up your attacks this way. It's, it's pretty rad. It means that a two-button attack system is actually a lot deeper than it looks. You can have all kinds of mix-ups, like where you knee into an uppercut, into another uppercut. You can just constantly uppercut with the system. Go into your punches, and then get a sweet-ass elbow off. It's, it's awesome. It's it's easy, too, is the main thing. So, attacking is not difficult to do, which is great. Breaking attacks. Some attacks have special property. Great! We broke down a door. Guess how many times we're going to do that while we're here? Not often, let me just tell you. You can also guard. So, this is where it's teaching you the basic defensive maneuvers. Guarding eats up your stamina every time you get hit. The more stamina that gets eaten up, uh, is based off of, sorry, the amount of stamina that gets eaten up is based off of the strength the, of the attack you just blocked. The other thing you can do is dodge. Which, uh, you know, straight up moves you out of the way of an attack. And finally, there's the absorb. Which is my specific ability, specific to my martial arts style. And also has the hardest timing out of the three. Dodging has... Um, oh, okay, blocking literally has no timing. You just block until you run out of stamina. Whereas dodging has like moderately difficult timing. You have to be on point with your dodges. You also have to not be hit by a tracking attack or a sweeping attack. Finally, the absorb, attack, the absorb that I've got. Which is the equivalent of... Uh, which is the equivalent of the dodge, the whoosh, or the parry for the other two classes that we could have started with. 
Uh, that one's got the smallest timing out of the three options we have available to us, but it is arguably the most powerful and needs to be used properly. We'll talk about the golden crystals floating around my midsection right in a, in a minute, but uh, let's just go ahead and bust open these doors. So there's three different defensive options you have at any one time, which is pretty awesome. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing in these pots. Yeah. There's only like one pot in the game, I think, that has an item for you. <laughs> Those are not them. And this is effectively just a way to quickly boost your experience. That way you can like practice using your, sp oh, your special ability if you want to. Practice using that uh, that red elbow attack if you want to. Oh, I should probably explain what's going on in the in the right box there. The fainting. Fainting is what happens that where if you don't want to do an attack, you just want to like juke your opponent out. You can straight up. You can straight up faint to your heart's content. It's pretty sweet. Uh, very very helpful for dealing with players that actually know what they're doing. And I just got my shit pushed in. Don't worry about it. It's fine. These guys are really low level, so I'm not worried about it. That elbow attack, as you saw there, just broke that guy's guard wide open. And that's important because the breaking of the guard wide open allows you to actually break through their block a lot easier. And it also eats up a ton of their stamina. You need to use guard breaking attacks as often as possible since those guard breaking attacks will... Oh, cool. There's fighting down there. I didn't see that before. They're actually fainting and such. And parrying. I actually haven't seen that before. I wonder if they ever stop fighting. You guys want to put bets? <laughs> I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if I can play... If we, if either one of them will ever actually die. But you'll notice that they are parrying. Like the, that minute where there's like that black explosion and they're stunned. That's what parry mans do. Yeah, I don't think that that's ending anytime soon. Thank you, I already know. So as you guys can see, there's three different defensive options between the dodge, blocking, your absorb, and two different attack options at any given moment by using your normal or alternative attacks. And there's a big gray door, and it asks us to find and defeat Cylan. Okay, so here's just a bit of a spoiler alert. This is the game. <laughs> not finding and defeating Silent, but opening a big gray door by killing other people first. That's the entire game. Uh, I'll show you guys. Like, the game will explain itself in a minute. Nice. Easy. While we're at it. Hey, folks. How's it going? That was an awesome level of absorption. I'm quite pleased that I managed to pull that off. I didn't quite get that last one. That's okay. Here. Try to attack me. Oops. Messed that one up. That's fine. So you might be noticing that there's a blue bar that pops up every time that I block an attack or defend against an attack. That's experience. For the move, specifically. You can learn new moves by defending against them. Now, there's a couple of really good things about this. First off, it teaches you that you have to be able to learn to defend against the attack to be able to actually attack with it. That's really smart. As far as design's concerned... Oh, by the way, he's like the only shortcut door in the game. Have fun with that one. Um, it's really, really smart. It forces you to learn to beat an attack before you use it. Which means that no attack should be broken. Yeah, you think that's going to stop me? Have some of those. Oh. Oh, that's my bad. Oh, you thought that you could get me with that spin kick? Thanks. All right. Now I'm going to explain how these gold crystals work. Gold crystals are called shards. You earn them by defending against attacks. And I hope it's at this point pretty intuitive that the uh, the more risky the defense you use against them, the more shards you get. So if you just block, you get some shards, but not many. Ow. Uh, ow. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. We might not get this heal. Ah, we only got like a tiny section of the heal off because it got cancelled. You know what? Don't worry about it. We'll fight other people. So let's just knock this guy out and get in the feeling. Oh, god damn it. Uh, I, blo I absorbed that. Thank you. Could you stop doing the whoosh man's thing? 
That is not your job to whoosh man me. I'll kick you right in the face. So that was Sea Lion. We have now killed him. Now see this door? We will now open it. Ye have been opened. And then there's this guy with the mask. Do you fight him? Ha ha! Absolutely not. Instead, you'll have a really awkwardly framed picture here. Looks like we're about to take a selfie. He is Tala. I'll try to help you as you progress, but if you lose yourself in the fold, I won't be able to save you. Whatever that means. Those who wear the mask are not all your enemies, you know. I will not attack you. That's good. When you are safe, you can enter meditation and practice your combat deck. Let's do that. So, what just happened? Well, we opened a door. And now there's this guy who's telling us that not all people in masks are bad. This is important because the game is a drop-in, drop-out kind of multiplayer. Every time you're in an area, there's a chance that up to two other people, so three including you, will be in that area. And they will phase in and phase out. Not all of those people are going to attack you. Sweet. In fact, most of them have been very, very helpful. Uh, and even if they do attack you, most people that do that don't typically end up trying to kill you all the time. With that said, though, there are some people that will just straight up attack you, kill you, and then leave you to die. So there, there, there's a bit of a mix between the two. Now let's talk about this. Meditation is where you do most of your character kind of upkeep and stuff. Uh, you have your level here, where Jack is now a level 2 prospect. <laughs> uh, and we have our different stats. Strength and Dexterity, all they do is they increase the damage you deal. Uh, based on the move that moves that you have equipped. So, moves that rely primarily on strength. So, really heavy punches, really strong kicks, uh, that kind of stuff, all rely on strength in order to deal that damage. We're going to focus primarily on that to start with. Dexterity relies on, uh, well, increases the damage of moves that are primarily dexterous. So, karate stuff, chops, uh, very specific kinds of kicks, and, um, you know, spinning high jump kicks and stuff are going to be all under dexterity for the most part. Vitality increases your life pool, obviously pretty important. Endurance increases your stamina, again, pretty important. And will increases the amount of shards you get, and how often you get them. Uh, shards, like we mentioned before, are the things that allow us to cast abilities. In this case, we only have access to heal. But as we go through the game, we're going to get more. Uh, and I'll show you what at least a couple of them do um, as we come along those. Mobility is the one thing you cannot change from here. Mobility is entirely reliant on what you're wearing and how heavy it all is. The more mobility you have, the more damage your attacks deal, since all of them, to a certain degree, rely on your mobility to be able to move faster or something along those lines. So, moves that require that mobility will do a lot less damage if you're wearing a lot of tanky armor. However, if you're wearing only tiny amounts of armor, then you'll do a lot more damage. Pretty, It's, it's a neat trade-off. The other thing that goes along with mobility here is the fact that uh, the less mobility you have, the slower your stamina comes back up. So if you're fairly fast, your stamina comes back up super quickly. It means that you can go nuts, regenerate most of your stamina back very, very quickly, and then get right back in there. Um, and if you're very, very slow, then the opposite. You don't get your stamina back very fast at all, and you kind of have to weather the storm of whatever's coming. With that said, extra armor can, pre pre sorry, can prevent you from taking a bunch of damage. So it's important to keep in mind that there is probably a balance and based off of your combat style and playing style and all that stuff, that's going to vary greatly. All of this does, to a certain degree. Um, every single one of these stats suffers from a soft cap and a hard cap. What I mean by that is, at a certain point, putting more points into a stat does a negligible bonus. So if I went up to like 60, like 6 strength or something like that at max level, it's not much better than having like 16 strength. In fact, more often than not, it's better to have 16 strength, 16 dexterity, and then putting your points elsewhere. So that way, you have a more balanced character that's got more value for every point you've put into it. We're going to put both of our points into strength to start off with, because I like doing a little bit more damage. And then we're also going to take a look at our combat deck. Now here, we, 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 don't have, we, we should only have access to one. But because my uh, main character is in a school, we actually have access to a second one, which gives us the ability to... I mean, use a completely different combat deck, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's just assume that we have the one. What is a combat deck, you might be asking? It's this. If you're wondering what the hell is going on, 
Don't worry, it's not so bad. But it is really deep as far as mechanics go. And this is the meat and potatoes of Absolver. So I apologize to all of you who are like, Oh, get with punching people already. This is important. So, the entire game revolves around you creating your own martial arts and movements. Like, move style. Right? All of this is a move set. And you get to customize it from start to finish. So while you're in this stance, for instance, the upper right stance where you're facing forward and to the right, that's where our two-punch cross-punch com combo comes in. I'm going to go ahead and change that and make this uh, second attack a low kick. Now instead of a cross-punch, we have a punch and a kick, which changes our stance back to this knee. What this is effectively has done is mean that we knee, punch, kick, knee, punch, kick. We now have a three-hit infinite loop combo that is a bit better mixed up. And I'll explain mix-ups as we go along. We also now have this empty slot here that we could probably, you know, put something into with just an uppercut. I would like to do that. So how about we put in a Charged Haymaker? So Charged Haymaker has a special property where it get, makes you have hyper armor. You take a little bit less damage and you can take an ex you can take a hit without actually getting stunned out of your attack. It's it's a very strong powerful move. There are a bunch of different moves with those properties. In fact, you'll notice there's a bunch of arrows, shield breaking things, and a bunch of like strange other things going on. So for instance, in this case, this one's got like an explosive punch or whatever, and then there's this thing, and you're like, what the hecky heck is going on? And you know what? Long story short, arrows move you in the direction that the arrow shows you. The spinny whirly thing is your hyper armor. Shield breakers break uh through the hyper armor they also deal a ton of stamina damage if someone decides to block and finally the explodey like pink fisty looking one that just breaks hyper armor that's all that does which means it's a fairly specific niche type of move now i'm not sure how i feel about having charged haymaker here so i'm going to remove that and i'm going to remove that attack as well you'll notice that now it's got a big red exclamation mark this means you cannot take this out you, you cannot you need to have a move there and there are eight moves necessary to make a combat deck. These first four here, and these first four here. As you level up, you'll get more and more moves. You can have up to three in every stance, which means you can have uh, ooh, it's 12 different attacks. Plus the four here means 16 different attacks and move lists, which is impressive. It starts you off with a tiny amount. You might be thinking, but well, that's bad. That's actually really good. Uh, the reason why it's very good is because it allows you, as a player, to get used to what's going on first. You actually have this ability to... Oh, right, we don't want to do that. Um, actually, in fact, why don't I change where cha Charged Haymaker goes? Is this uh, where Charged Haymaker can go? Yeah, let's do that instead. Yeah, that makes a little bit more sense. And then we'll put uh, Uppercut into Body Blow. And that should... Ah, uh, that doesn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. How about we put Cross Punch into Body Blow? That works a little bit better. What about Body Blow into Cross Punch? That probably works better. Yeah, there we go. That that seems a bit more reasonable. Uh, do I want a different attack here? There's spin back fist if I want it. I'm not sure if I do. It's a bit. It's about the same speed and has less power. It's a little harder to predict. It puts you in a different stance. What stance does it put you in? Bottom left. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. That's fine. And what do you? What do we have for options here? You know what? We're gonna stick to the pushed elbow. That's okay. Yeah, this works great. This is fine. <laughs> We're good with this. So, as you can tell, there's a lot of depth to this. And once you've got, like, your first eight moves, you can make a combat deck that's actually fairly effective with just eight moves. If you pick, you know, very effective moves that work well together and all that stuff. You can also have a combat deck that works very well with all 12 moves in the attack sequences. Meaning, like, a total 16. It, it is very much up to the player. And that's great. On top of that, there are so many moves. Like, we can't actually check out the move list right now. Give me a second. I would like to actually check out the move list. Will it allow me to do that while we're here? No. We'll, we'll check it out once we get into the next area. But long story short, there are enough moves that if you want to spend... If you had a teacher, like an actual player, teaching you the moves constantly... And... You guys really wanted to learn all the moves very, very fast. And one of them was a Grandmaster. Learned every single move that there is in the game. It would still take about one and a half hours to learn all those moves as fast as possible from that player. It's a ton 
of moves. So, your mileage may vary when it comes to that kind of play. If you're not the type of person that enjoys collecting attacks and looking for them out in the world and then learning how to defend against them and then beating your opponents who've got them because that's important to mention you can't get the experience for a move unless if you kill the person who used the move against you that you defended um then yeah this is a that, that, that might seem a bit grindy but don't worry the vast majority of moves that you want you learn just by going through the game and you don't even need them to beat the story mode of the game or to necessarily be an effective fighter in the pvp sections in the pvp parts of this game so we'll get to that later for now look at this listen to it doesn't it look gorgeous It's worth mentioning that the presentation of this game, I find, is on point. There's a lot of great visuals. There's a lot of great sounds. And this is on medium graphics. Oh, what was that? Was that a ledge? Yeah, can you climb back up it? No, you're stuck here now. Welcome to the world of Absolver. You're now in the sandbox. But it looks really, really cool, doesn't it? It's a solid little spit of land. That's probably one of the biggest strengths of this game, is the fact that it allows you to, I mean, exist here. Alright, so what we just did, we activated the bonfire. If you played Dark Souls, that made perfect sense. If you didn't, let me explain. So this uh, altar here is where we get to rest up, and it's a place to save. It automatically saves, by the way, you don't have to go into a save files or whatever. The game automatically saves every time you get to a bonfire. Altar. Whatever. It's the same thing. It's a big glowing thing that you sit and rest at. Um, it also has like a little map on the left, and I'm going to talk about that in a second here after we talk to Vigo Mortensen after he's let his hair go, grow too long for a little too long. You know what I mean. To become an Absolver, you must prove your worth and defeat Risran in the Hanging Gardens above the Tower of a Doll. Sure, those are words. But first, you must beat Currents in the Coliseum, kill Nora and her brother Kagal in the Old Birdhouse, and the six marked ones roaming the city in the forest. Oh, good. Only then will the stone gate in the imperial of the Imperial Tower open. This headstone will show your remaining targets. Beware of these foes. They'll not be defeated easily. So, thanks for the, thanks for the heads up. Uh, this headstone here is the exact same thing as that map that we just saw here at the altar. So the headstone is largely just a set piece. When you're out in the world you're and you're hunting down these marked ones, you have to use this very, very vague incredibly unhelpful map <laughs> it's it's not largely helpful now uh we're also just going to pick up a little bonus here and we're gonna give samurai jack a new hat um the the map is incredibly vague it doesn't tell you how to get to places it doesn't really give you more than a very general layout of the world and you might be looking at this and going wow that world actually seems pretty big you know what You'd be surprised how fast you learn absolutely everything in this game because the region's pretty sectioned off and on top of that, not all that big. Um, but they are fun to explore the first time through and, and admittedly, it took me about nine hours to get through the game the first time. This is going to take a lot less time than that. And you can, and I think the record right now is 22 minutes because the game is largely skippable. Uh, we're going to go ahead and equip a new hat. So equipment works like this. You have a bunch of different slots, nine of them. You have elbows, shoulders, shirt, undershirt, gloves, boots, pants, and belts, and masks. Uh, and every one of these comes with different ratings for blunt and cut protection as well as weight. You can see here under the bullet kit mask there's a little like weight symbol. And it goes from 1 to 4. That means that this thing is 3 pounds heavier than my previous mask. <laughs> it's a 4 pound mask. Um, the blunt protection on it, it goes up to, it, like is, is pretty high. And the cut protection on it is fantastic. So what it, does that all mean? Blunt damage is stuff that happens because somebody punched or kicked you. Cut damage happens when somebody hits you with a weapon, usually a sharp one, and cut damage pokes through your normal guard. So while we're blocking like this, if somebody had a weapon of some kind that was a sword, uh, it would actually still deal damage, whereas most of the time it would not. Having cut protection avoids that somewhat. But for now, we just have this bulletkin mask in our basic gear. So let's get a move on. We're going to complete the game 
in uh, numerical order. So starting from the first marked one onward. But I want to mention this straight up. You can complete this game in any order you want. Just so long as Risrin is last. You could do the sixth mark one first if you wanted. Then the third, then the fourth, then the second, then the first. And then, like, it's up to you. Which is actually pretty cool. So if you decide to just wander the world, you've got a lot of options to get lost with. And it, it, it's, it is fun. Oh, Valdo is in the area. Pretty sweet. Now, here's an interesting little thing I want to show you guys. If you come up on this ledge and you're like, whoa, what's here? You'll notice there's like a willow tree and there's like this guy in the back. You're like, hey, that guy's sitting down. What can I, why can't I look at my map? Oh, wait, because you're not at a bonfire. Well, I guess you have to find one then. But I want to go to that willow tree place because it looks pretty sweet. Well, you're not wrong. The willow tree place is important. Oh, hello. How are you? There's two of them, huh? You dare? You dare? Attack me? Okay, we're actually going to back off so that we got stamina enough to block most of these attacks. There we go. That was actually really well played. So, what you want to do when you're fighting in this game is take your time with most of the fights. Don't act too hastily, and whatever you do, do not spam. Balls. Because if you spam like what I just did there, you end up having a bad time. Thanks for dying. Oh, absorbed the wrong attack there. You can't absorb those fiery attacks. That's the one downside to cult is that you need to use all three of your defensive abilities guaranteed. Okay, that'll do enough for now. That's fine. And then he just failed to block. Okay, cool. So this here's a cairn. There are, let's see, three per region plus the four in that area means about 18 of them, I think. Every one of these has a piece of gear in them that is more or less helpful to you. Uh, and they're all good quality, you know, pieces of equipment. Like, it's worth equipping most of them. However, we're not going to be equipping all of them because, largely, I'm a sucker for playing dollhouse. Okay, I'm going to just back off at this one. Yeah, you got some different attacks. That's fine. I don't mind. And need the liver. Then go in for some punches. Another low kick. Go for a body blow. Then look at that charge attack. Go for the elbow. The elbow missed. Oh, I blocked your Uramawashi. Your sweet spinny kick. Oh, your parrymans, huh? You know what? Don't worry about being parrymans. That's okay. Not everyone can be cool like me. Ow. You know what? Your number's up. Excuse me? Thank you for dying. I appreciate it. But yeah, all the all the Cairns have a piece of equipment that's actually very useful to you. And is largely better quality than most of the rest of the gear that you're going to find around in the PvE world. So let's go ahead. Have a sit down. There's, there's Valu, it seems. Uh, judging by the attire that they've got and everything, they pre-ordered the game. <laughs> Which is fine. Uh, can we actually meditate? Do we have? We do have uh, some stat points. You know what? Let's put that into uh, strength again. We'll get our strength and our dexterity up to ten, and then we'll work on our other stats to make sure that we're pretty well balanced. And here's a second cairn, and it's going to have leather shoulder pads. We're actually going to equip those immediately. So boom, there we go. Now, as I mentioned before, I like playing dollhouse. So these bracelets—they don't do anything for me. I rather have the prospect, the uh, prospects gloves, which I think look pretty rad, honestly. And now that we're all healed up and ready to go, we're going to go off and fight the marked one in this area. Which is just this way. Now you might be noticing, hey wolf, you seem to have gotten a weapon. Would you mind speaking into that a little? And I don't mind speaking to that at all. Every weapon you pick up in the game is one of two kinds of weapons as of right now. Oh, that was a bad time to block. How dare you block my attacks, you jerk. There you go. Uh, and they come in two varieties. Swords and war gloves. Swords 
uh, tend to have a little bit more cut damage than blunt damage, which means that they tend to be sharper and all that stuff. They also tend to be less durable, uh, and they don't protect from as much cut damage as, uh, as the war gloves. But the main, look, the main thing behind having those kinds of, what the hecky heck? Somebody has left the area or something. Or is trying to join the area because now there's lag, which is a problem. Here, hold on. What? What? No! <laughs> no, we're running. We're running before the lag kills us. What the hell? Do you, do you, do you mind? D do you mind? That was incredible. <laughs> so there's an offline mode. I, I'm not gonna lie. Tempted to, to just activate it, but we're not going to. We'll, we'll tough through it because this is a part of the game. This is most certainly a part of the game. Lag exists. Um, and it's pretty rough, honestly. Nice attacks this time. Oh. Don't spam your attacks or else they'll just. Oh, they'll absolutely destroy your face. Okay, Rivario needs to be careful. We need to be careful around this guy. Because this guy... This guy here is a parrymance. Which means we're going to want to faint a lot to make sure that he parries badly. Oh god. Oh, ow. That could have been really bad. Hold on. Back off. Get a heal. Hey friend, how's it going? Block, block, dodge. That's bad. Okay, good thing. We managed to block most of that damage. We got a lot of HP back thanks to our heal. So the heal in this game is actually interesting. And then it uh, incentivizes you to actually get very aggressive. Since every attack you manage to land to... Dodge it. Good. Every attack you manage to land while you have heal active on you actually gives you a ton of HP back. So consider it like a life on hit. It's not exactly a life steal. Nice. Blocking and defensive options there. That was actually really sweet. Nice one, dick. I hate the fact that the computers can parry like right off the cuff like that. And they do it so well. Good, he's dead. We've done it. That's a marked one down. Easiest thing I've ever done in my life. And we gotta level up. Sweet Jesus. What was I saying? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, there. Level 10 for strength. That's fine. We'll leave it at that for now. Um, right. So marked ones are tough. And that one in particular is a really good lesson in learning to use all your different attacks. And all your different defensive options. And all the different tools in your kit. You have to know how to faint to get past the four, the, the parry blocks. You have to be able, you have to know how to dodge, yeah, to be able to get past that attack like those attacks there. And especially if you're cult, uh, that's the case. The other two classes can deal with those guard breaking attacks. Thanks for dying. Whereas cult cannot. So, as a cult player, you have to learn all the different attacks that that guy has. And it can be a little bit tough, but it is a lot of fun. So, it's worth the, it's worth your time. Alright, we've got our chest piece. We look pretty radical now. It's, it's, it's a pretty sweet armor, if I'm being honest. And unfortunately, Rivario didn't drop his, his sweet mask. Which which makes me a little sad. It, it, it's pretty... Like, his mask is pretty radical. It's a upside-down crying face. It's really weird, but I love it to bits. Anyway, we're going to stick with Bulletkin Mask regardless, because Bulletkin Mask is still cuter and still cooler. But Marked Ones not only give a ton of experience and, and, and advance you, as far as the game is concerned, but then on top of that, they, uh, they give you special abilities. You might have noticed that next, in the bottom left corner, we had our heal icon before. Uh, now we have our heal icon and an uh, Earthquake icon. The Earthquake icon... Gives us a spell called Earthquake Go Figure. And Earthquake does something very different. It also costs two shards. But it is a very strong move to have. So how about we use it here? It actually seems like a really good time to do so. 
So it's only like a temporary boost, but it is a very necessary boost, seeing as the majority of these guys were all trying to attack me at once. We've learned to move. You hear that? That chew sound that we just got? Now all we have to do is kill this guy, and we've learned it for good. We still have a little bit of a... There we go. We had a little bit of stamina. It's now all gone. We've learned a second move. That was fast. Please die. Okay, so we've unlocked Hook. And... Anything else? Doesn't seem like it. Never mind, we just unlocked Hook. That's all. Now let's kill these guys quickly for the experience, because, again... When the developer says, take your time, they're effectively saying, just pad your own game time and you'll do better. Which, they're not lying. If you... Thanks for dying. Uh, if you end up taking your time in this game, you will have a much easier time as you're going around smashing stuff, getting used to your combat deck, and trying out new moves as you go along. We'll end on that note for that combo. Oh, God. Please get smashed. Thank you. And that gave us something? Ooh, we got new gloves. Leather wrist wristbands? Uh, yeah, those are better than our current ones. How about we go with that? Even if they're lower, like, they're not high-quality leather wristbands, they'll, they'll still do the trick. But yeah, the, the main thing with this game is that if you take your time, you have an easier time. Because then you get to learn all the different moves that you've uh, managed to unlock. So how about we go ahead and do that right away. And um, this ups our damage by zero right now. Give it time. Um, how about we go ahead and upgrade our will, because that increases our shard generation, which is always good. And let's check out our new moves we managed to pick up. So we now have a, a hook we could use. Which is slightly slower, but it hits a little bit harder instead of that front punch. I'd rather have the front punch, if I'm being honest. Uh, just because it's easier to use. However, the body block into body blow into hook seems actually pretty reasonable instead of cross punch. Uh, what about here? What do we do? We have anything new here? No, not yet. But we are learning a bunch of different moves, including Uramawashi. We're getting there. Okay, let me show you what I mean by learning new moves. So, I mentioned before that there's a lot of moves, and there's four different styles. We could play as Forsaken style if we wanted to, but we're not going to because I refuse to. I hate them. Um, when you are looking at a moves list, and once you've learned a bunch of moves, this is how many there are. And that's just for your fists. Um, you also have sword moves that you need to learn. And they are incredibly good. They're very useful, but uh, at the end of the day, you got to learn a lot of them if you want to have a good time in this game. It means that there's a lot of time that's going to be spent doing that instead of literally anything else. Now, you can mix your sword attacks with normal attacks, so it's not just a sword that you're using all the time. Uh, what does this do? One, two, three. Uh, that's three thrusts in a row. I'm not sure how I feel about that, honestly. I'd rather have uh, a different attack there. Even if it's not a sword attack, it'd be nice. Uh, how about... Instead of this thrust here, how about we put in... A pushed elbow. No, we can put in a different attack. Yeah, we can put in a fast punch. Which is a powerful little attack, which gives us another... Reverse slash... Into a leg kick. Which gives us this leather knee. So we have like a five hit combo now. And we can make this... Do nothing at all. Um, for now... How about we take this attack and... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold the phone. This is where back thrust is? Let's do it. Uh, back thrust goes there. Uh, and you, what could you be? Roll uppercut might be more helpful to us. So how about we give you the roll uppercut? We turn you into the reverse thrust. Which turns into this. Which turns into this. Which turns into... This, this here? Is there another attack we could use here instead? I'm actually kind of tempted to do this. So it goes hit, sl shield slash, reverse sl Ah, that's actually kind of gross. We need a faster attack there. We don't have one. Not yet. Huh. So no, we don't want this here. Let's continue with the fast punch. So it's like slash, fast punch, into those two attacks there. Maybe liver need, needs a replacement? I, 
I'm not sure about that either. You know, as much as I love the back thrust, the back thrust stays where it is. <laughs> we can get into it very easily if need be. It's just a couple of Y attacks later, and then we get into a, a, a three hit cycle where we have that thrust punch, that thrust punch. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it'll do. At least we've messed around with our sh with our sword deck a little bit, so that way we can say that we've touched it a little. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's keep going. Let's get into the next region. So what I mean by uh, open sandboxy kind of this, you have access to two different regions. There's the uh, there's the forest collars region over that way, which is very very pretty. We're gonna be going to then after this next place, and this next place is the swamp. The swamp uh is where we're going to, is where we are going to find the second marked one and is probably one of the long like one of the tougher places for people to go to next the reason being there i mean you'll see next episode because this one's already gone on long enough we're just going to find the bonfire super fast and then uh at the beginning of the next you know what hold on let me show you what i mean by super fast we're just going to dodge everybody um Next episode, we're going to find all the Karens, fight everybody in here, and then uh, beat up the marked one, as well as like do that in the next area. Shouldn't be too difficult. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, you can avoid everything in this game if you wanted to. Let's take a look at our map. So, we were in a different area before. You'll notice that there's no paths that really tell you which area you're going to next, or how to get the next area, or anything along those lines. Um, the game is trying to be cryptic. And when I said earlier, it kind of takes a page out of Dark Souls' notebook when, uh, talking about equipment and telling story. I think it copied, like, half the notes from Dark Souls' notebook and then forgot to copy the, uh, like, the important half. It's annoying how little information they give you right now. And for a new player, it's fine because it means you're honestly going to get lost. And that means that you're definitely going to learn the world the hard way. It's the game's prerogative. But, um... All things considered, is it, I'm not sure if it's necessary for, for, for Absolver. But we don't have to worry about that. I already know the world inside and out. So we're going to find our way very, very easily. I'm just going to show you where everything is. But for now, if this episode's gone on long enough. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Hope you folks enjoyed yourselves. If you did, be sure to let me know. Hit the like button down below. And, uh, as always, I'll see you guys next time.